Hello. Um, so I wanted to do some intuitive painting and uh, I wanted to record it because it's one of my favorite ways to paint and um, I thought it might be helpful to other people too. So um, for me, intuitive painting is kind of inside out art. So I'm not focusing very much on my final product. It's more about the process and being mindful and aware of what's happening throughout the process. Um, it's a situation where there's no right or wrong mark or right or wrong way of doing things. It's morally neutral. It's not good or bad. Um, the decision to make this art is also morally neutral. It's not good or bad. It's just a process about being present and aware and accepting thoughts and feelings and um, whatever happens on paper. So let's just get into it. So I've got this little four by six inch piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to prep it, prep my area. And while I do that, I'm going to be setting my intention for this time uh, as I sit down to paint. So I'm going to take a deep breath. Okay. So I really like this big, moppy watercolor brush. I'm going to dip it in my water. And I'm going to wet both sides of my paper and while I'm doing that I'm just enjoying the process hearing the sound of my brush across the paper and I'm noticing how the paper is warping and how funny and weird that is I don't think that will be very helpful to me while I'm painting, so I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. So I'm trying to access curiosity. I'm trying to set aside worries about if this is going to turn out alright. Is this video going to turn out alright? Will the art look okay at the end? Because it doesn't really matter if it will or not. For me, it's more about the doing of it. So I'm going to pick this up a second and kind of wipe my table up here. Oh, my squeaking. <laughs> Squeaky clean. I'm going to lay this back down. I'm gonna get some tape. This is just washi tape. And I'm gonna use it to tape my paper down so that it doesn't warp as we add more colors. I'm just enjoying the sounds of the tape. It's kind of like ASMR. I'm thinking about how I'm going to accept whatever thoughts or feelings I have during this process. If I don't like something, that's going to be okay. If I do really like it, that's also going to be okay. Just trying to remain in a mindset of curiosity and awareness. I'm thinking about my breathing. I'm thinking about if I feel any anxiety or frustration or anything else in my body. Okay. So my intentions are set. We're going to paint and we're not going to worry about whether it's good or bad. We're just going to enjoy the process of painting. Um, even if we can't enjoy the process of painting, we're going to be aware 
of what's happening and be curious about that while we're painting. So, I have some watercolors here, like this. It's a big messy tin of watercolors, but I also have some paints that I made out of uh, flower petals that I grew. This is paint from red geranium flowers, and I've got a few other colors over here, so I'm going to open these up. I have limited my color palette a little bit with these. And I'm going to sit here and look at my colors and decide what I want to start with. Now this this type of painting, for me, intuitive painting, isn't really about knowing special techniques, although knowing some does help. It's more about listening to what my hand and my brain wants to do, what it's itching to do, and letting it do that. So, I'm feeling like I want to play with this yellow here. So I'm going to get some yellow on my brush. I don't have any preconceived ideas of what this is going to be. I'm just going to start putting color on my paper. My brain is kind of enjoying these big strokes, big watery strokes. So let's just keep doing that. I can feel, internally, I can feel anxiety about this process. Wondering if my video settings are correct or if you'll be able to hear me or all of that. I can feel myself wanting to worry about how this will look at the end. Wanting to worry about if this will turn out to be a pretty thing. And I'm going to tell my brain that that's fine. You can worry about that if you want to. I'm going to keep painting though, Mr. Brain. So I've got some yellow on here. It's probably kind of subtle. I think I need a little bit more up here. If you want to explore the reason, the, the answer to the why, I would suggest doing it later, after it's complete and thinking back over the process. Now is the time to just do. This is a very low risk thing here. No one has to see your drawing or painting. a good place to build confidence in just exploring the things you like or what you think. So I'm feeling like I want to do these little taps, these little taps on my paper with my paintbrush. And here's one of the things that I love about this type of paint that I'm using. This little paint guy right here made this color by adding lemon juice to one of my flower paints. And lemon juice reacts with all the flower paints to some extent. And so I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of an outline where this paint with the lemon juice is interacting with the previous yellow 
paint. It has a, it makes a really cool effect that I really like. It's kind of like the paint is doing some of the work for me. So I've got these really subtle color changes here. So a second ago I was talking about how this is a low risk activity and what I mean is it's a low risk activity to learn about yourself and to make decisions based purely on whether you like it or not. Um, I, that's one of the things that I really like about this type of art. There's no right or wrong and it's all about curiosity and experimentation. And I'm not trying to make a shape or make this look like anything, so um, I'm not going to grade myself on how realistic it is. It's one of the great things about abstract, it kind of keeps you from doing that. There are also moments like this where I stop and just look and observe and see what the paint and what the paper is doing. And I can think about what I like and what I don't like. So right now I really like how this lemon juice paint is pushing the yellow paint out and making these really cool outlines and shapes. I'm not a fan of how my paper is kind of buckling right here and right here. And now I can make a decision. Do I accept that and explore that idea of dealing with discomfort or dealing with something you don't like that you can't change or do I try and change it and it kind of just depends on the day as to whether I pursue that or not so today I think I'm gonna soak a little bit of this pigment up a lot just a little bit using my paper towel, really gently tapping the paper. It pulls up some of that extra pigment. There's these really cool lines that are happening from the yellow paint being pushed out. I really, I really like that. So I think I want to bring some more focus to this middle part. Add a little bit more interest there. So maybe Let's try this little brush. Let's get this um, this dark brown. This is from a different flower that I made my paint from. Let's see what happens here, if anything. It's kind of a brownish color. Oh, there's a little bit of flower in there. <laughs> adding this, kind of making decisions about if I like it or not. I'm not sure that I do, and that's fine. I can remove it. I'm going to leave little traces of it though. I like to leave traces of what I did even if I don't even if I didn't like how it ended up, I leave traces of it to remember that that was part of the process. So let's see. I still want to put something in the middle here, but I need to make a decision about what. I have this really pretty red color that I like a lot. 
let's see what would happen if I put that in the middle. Oops, some flower bits. I can feel my hesitation because I really liked what I had before this. I really liked this yellow and tan thing that was going on. And I felt a lot of hesitance to add this next color. And it's not right or wrong when I make that decision. I could have ended the painting where it was and that would have been fine. Or I can be adventurous and add another color on top and that's fine too. There isn't a correct or an incorrect here. So don't worry about making the right decision or the wrong decision. in some areas and it's purple in others and I like the way it pushes against the, the yellow so I'm enjoying that I think I'm going to soak up a little bit of this over here because there's a little divot in my paper things about this flower watercolor is there's these little specks of the crushed up flower petals still in there and it gives a little bit of texture. I'm going to take time to enjoy what I have right now. Looking at all the texture on the paper, looking at how the colors change as the lemon juice and stuff like that interacts. Looking how the, the color is drying on the edges, getting really saturated and pigmented, I think that's really neat. I'm feeling like I want to do one more thing to this. Now I'm going to take this paint, which is some of that red geranium that I was just using, but with lemon juice added to it. And it's a much brighter, much brighter red color. And I'm just going to add a little bit of it. And I can feel that, oh no, what if this is the wrong choice coming up? But remember, I already took time to enjoy what I had. And so I feel more okay with trying something new right now. Because I had that moment with it as it was. is a little bit more pink. It looks really bright here, but it compared to the other colors, but it, it dries a little bit less neon in comparison. also do to pick up some pigment if you don't like it is rinse your brush, get it really dry on your paper towel, and brush it over the pigment that you want to pick up and it, it'll just pick up some of it, make it a little less intense. You can also use that to make some interesting designs and shapes. thinking maybe I will try to do that here. Let's 
let's take this. Actually, let's get a new brush. Let's get a really dry one. And let's see what happens if I drag it. color but it's also kind of um, spreading it around a lot of the things that I do in these types of paintings are very subtle at the moment it changes based on my mood and what's happening in my life. Let's see. Is there anything I want to add to this? I feel like I need I need something. I want to do something in here. Maybe I just want to add more of this back in. Sometimes I have that feeling of I want to do something, but I don't know what it is. And sometimes I'll do the same thing over and over again and remove it every single time. like this. I actually find that process really interesting when you add and remove and add and remove and add and remove because there's evidence left behind that you did that. You can't completely remove it from the paper. And I think it makes some interesting layers of complexity. I can feel that my curiosity is working right now, wondering what will happen if I do this or if I try that. And that's where we want to be. We want to be curious. I like adding paints that react with what's around them because it moves the other paint in ways that I couldn't. Now another type of paint that we have is one with, let me see if I can find it, this paint has baking soda added to it, and I wonder how it will interact. It's already interacting right there in a very big way. So this is a very brown color right here, but when I put it on my paper with all these other paints, including the ones with the lemon juice, with the acid, it becomes bright green. Isn't that interesting? I also love how on the edges where the green transitions to these other colors it turns blue. I don't know if you can see it but there's a little bit of blue right there. It's very fun. And I'm not, I haven't been paying attention to whether this would actually look good or not. <laughs> um, I'm kind of just enjoying doing it. You can see how it interacts differently with different paint colors.
like to smooth some of that out so that it's a little more subtle. Let's go back in with this red over here, this purpley reddish color. And see what we can do. See if we can get any more of that blue to come out. I have found so far that the red geranium paint has been the most interesting to work with. The colors change quite a bit and interact with each other a lot. Maybe a little tiny bit of this. Sometimes my, my too much comes in. <laughs> That's not a real thing. There's, it's fine to add more and more and more if you're enjoying yourself. onto this middle line right here. It feels like that's where things are happening. That's where it's the interesting stuff in this painting. Okay, I'm gonna dab at some of that excess. So, I played a lot with a lot of colors. We made a lot of interesting marks. I enjoyed watching the colors change. I was curious. And here at the end, I like to, when I think I'm about done, I like to sit and just observe it and appreciate the fact that I took the time to do this. Remind myself of what my intentions were, that it's not about the finished product, it's about the process. And I also reflect on what I was thinking what are the thoughts that went through my mind while I was thinking about this, or, or what does this make me think of? And sometimes I'll write a title right down here on my, on my tape with a Sharpie or a pen or something. And I'll leave this to dry on my desk, come back to it later and write the title on the back, maybe with a little blurb about uh, what the experience of painting this was like. And once I'm done appreciating the fact that I took the time to do this, I can take a deep breath. And start separating myself from the process. I can start putting my, my uh, supplies away.
lashes a little bit. And that can be done. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you um, enjoyed that process or at least got some little thing from it. Um, intuitive painting is one of my favorite types of painting to do. I think it can be really validating and self-affirming. I think it's helpful to figure out um, what's going on. It's kind of a record of where your brain was and, and what you were interested in in kind of a weird abstract way. <laughs> Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Hope you'll join me again another time. Bye.